uh, summarized uh, the pathophysiology of chronic GVHD, uh, a main point of my uh, talk was uh, that we cannot think about chronic GVHD as an event occurring 100 days after transplantation. But uh, there is a continuum of pathophysiology, starting already with the day of transplantation. Uh, I showed data uh, that uh, the T cell number and uh, the T cell quality at the time of transplant is, has a major impact on chronic GVHD. We know it also from post-transplant cyclophosphamide that early uh, intervention affects chronic GVHD. I think that was one of the main points. And we, if we think about prevention of chronic GVHD, we have to start very early this intervention and prevention. The other main point is uh, the increasing knowledge uh, about um, the role of B cells uh, in chronic GVHD. So uh, there's strong evidence that allo uh, antibodies, but also a huge number of autoantibodies uh, produced by aberrant B cells is contributing to the pathophysiology of chronic GVHD. And again, we have to think about uh, the sequence of uh, events leading to this autoreactivity. And this starts again early with thymic damage by acute GVHD. And in older patients, it starts uh, with uh, damage in the fibroblastic reticular uh, cells in the lymph nodes, which prevents elimination of uh, autoreactive uh, T cells. And these autoreactive T cells have pathways finally stimulating T follicular helper cells and uh, the uh, um, uh, apparent B cells in the context of chronic GVHD. So we uh, have by this many options for new interventions. For instance, IL-21 is an important mediator of B cells and uh, new uh, drugs like the ROC inhibitors could interfere with this pathways and this might explain their uh, very promising results uh, in the context of chronic GVHD. So these were my main points of my talk.